to Significant TV, Significant Stories from Significant Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio today is Pam Coleman with a master's in education, and she is founder of Legacy Makers Training Solutions. Pam, welcome to the show. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. My pleasure, my pleasure. It's so exciting, the work that you're doing. And, you know, in the title of your business is Legacy Makers. Before I get into my traditional first question, share with me why did you choose the business name that you chose? Legacy Makers. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, what I do is a continuation of my parents' legacy. Um, back in 1965, these are my parents. My dad, you know, just passed away in 2015, but William and Lillard Green started a preschool for me, and back at that time, there weren't many opportunities for people to have a high-quality preschool. So they started one for me mm -hmm. with two staff and 17 students and eventually grew to one of the largest preschools of its uh, type in the country. And mm -hmm. so when that school closed, I worked there for a number of years, I kind of thought, how can I extend what my parents did? I don't want to start a school, but I want to continue um, providing nurturing for children, supporting parents and families. And my husband came up with the name Legacy Makers, and so here we are. That's terrific. Now, you said a school, largest school of its kind. Yes. Be more specific. I know the backstory, well, but our, our listening audience might yes. not. Yes. Um, at that time, actually, in 1965, there were some very high-quality preschools, but unfortunately, my parents weren't able to get me in because of um, racism. So mm -hmm. they wanted to start a school that was open to everyone, but it turns out that it served pre predominantly African-American students. Mm -hmm. So at one time it had about 800 students um, from nursery through eighth grade, and so thousands of students went through the doors of Ivy Leaf School um, over the 43 years of its existence. And one of the um, premises is that when you begin to um, have high expectations for students, you're able to produce the leaders, and that's yes. what it's done. So there are judges, there are doctors, there are, you know, so many people now who are in their 30s, 40s, and 50s who are doing extremely well. And I, again, wanted to continue that legacy. Well, so that is a powerful story. Yes. So for you, your business is a continuation of a legacy. But tell me, what was the significant moment that sort of made you decide or helped you decide that business was for you? Um, I've always been an entrepreneur, and I, I watched my parents in entrepreneurship. I married an entrepreneur, ah. so we have multiple businesses. Mm -hmm. We have a network marketing business. We also have a property management business. But this is near and dear to my heart. I'm a college professor, and I also do trainings. But I said, why not combine all the things that I love and start a business for myself? I'm doing it for other people. Mm -hmm. And so um, one of the first things that I thought about is I don't want to do this just for me. I want to involve other educators. So I have a team of about five ladies right now. One of them is actually one of my students from Eastern University. Um, another, I, I just have some amazing people on my team. And together we're writing some of the trainings and we're actually going out to conduct the trainings. And so not only um, will we train like a one-time event, but also two of us are certified to coach, meaning mm -hmm. that we can go back into the schools and provide ongoing support, because that's very important. We mm -hmm. don't want it to be just one and done. Right. So the model would be to train, to coach, and do, do some other training so we can see significant change in the preschools. Well, you know I love that word, significant, yes. <laughs> so I'm glad that you integrated that into um, your description. So let's back up a moment, and I'd love for you to share, now that you've given us the background, the name of your business and the core purpose. Who do you serve? Why do you serve them? Why do people choose you? The core purpose is to support the adults who are training and working with our children. Mm -hmm. So that means the, the parents, that means teachers, that means directors. And also one thing that's very, very important to me, there are so many people who have children with special needs. Um, that's near and dear to my heart because after I left Ivy Leaf, I worked for about 15 years in early intervention. So 
I gave direct service to those children. I also worked with their parents. And then later on, I wasn't working with them directly, but I was a case manager, helping with assessments, coordinating teams of assessors, um, making sure that they got the services they need. And so that's something I'm very passionate mm -hmm. about. So even though it may seem like that's not a connection, it is, that's one of the third layers of, um, of our company, mm -hmm. that if there are people who need advocacy for their children, or there might even be preschools that need some support that they're not getting from outside sources, that's one of the things that we're gonna offer. Um, I've seen a lot of heartache, because mm -hmm. um, especially in early intervention, many times parents are in denial. They are, and they're mm -hmm. angry, and mm -hmm. they want you to fix it. They want mm -hmm. you to fix their child. They mm -hmm. don't know what to do or where to turn or what resources are available. I've also seen inequities because I've worked in Montgomery and Bucks County. I've also worked in Philadelphia. So I've seen that even though early intervention is the same system, if people know what to do, um, they're able to mm -hmm. access services much better. Mm -hmm. um, and so for free, a lot of times people come up to me and they ask me things and I've written letters on their behalf. The way I write a letter, it looks like it's a lawyer's letter. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And the people who are receiving the letter, whether it's the school district or whatever, they don't know that it's coming from me. But I have mm -hmm. the background in it. Mm -hmm. And because of some of the things that I've done, I've been able to help people to access more services for their children or get their children into services because they didn't know the law. I'm very passionate about that. I see so. that. I see that. <laughs> and you are really speaking to the results that you create. Yes. Is there a particular situation that you'd be able to share where your expertise, that combination of experiences, really helped a family, a teacher, a child? Hmm. Um. I have one in particular, and I won't call names, so, sure, but sure, uh, there's a, a lady that I used to work with, and she lived in a suburban district, mm -hmm. and her daughter had an IEP, which is an individualized education plan, mm -hmm. and um, her daughter was only receiving a minimal amount of services just for speech, but as she was talking to me, I could tell there were some other issues. It sounded like she had a learning disability, and in order for you to determine that, you have to be tested by a psychologist mm -hmm. and so forth, mm -hmm. and her school district was giving her the runaround. Her, her daughter was by now fourth grade, and she said she knew when she was young that she needed more help, but they just kept saying, no, she's speech. And this particular school district said to her, um, why don't you find a high school student and let the student tutor your daughter? Ooh. That's unacceptable. Okay. So she explained the situation. I got documentation that I needed to then write a specific letter that addressed some of the concerns. And as a result of that, um, she got a reevaluation. She was able to receive the services that she needs. And I really feel like, mm -hmm. you know, her daughter's going to be a lot better. Well, she is. She's a lot better mm -hmm. off now because she is receiving more support. Right. She, she goes to a resource room and she gets speech. And it's just a lot better. She was pulling her hair out. She said mm -hmm. it would take her daughter three and four hours to do homework. And her daughter was frustrated. She was getting depressed. She was shutting down. Mm -hmm. That's important. Mm -hmm. um, on the other end of the spectrum, there was another lady whose daughter was homeschooled for a number of years. She was now about to enter high school. And she selected a high school in Philadelphia that wasn't the best. And mm -hmm. because of how intelligent her daughter was, I, I kind of listened to her, but I left it alone. So when I encountered her, um, I asked, how is your daughter doing? She said, my daughter hates it because mm. they're disrespectful. The work, the level of work is not what she's accustomed to. So I said, let me see what I can do. So. I kind of, you know, talked to a few people that I knew and kind of shared with them a little bit about this young lady and how supportive her family is. And as a result, that young lady was able to come out of that high school that was not a good fit for her mm -hmm. and move into a much more rig rigorously academic school. And she's thriving. She's doing oh, well. Oh, that's wonderful. So that's wonderful. I feel good about that. I mean, these are mm -hmm. things that I'm passionate about. You are. So. You are. Yes. What are some of the guiding principles when we were talking before the show? You said there were some guiding principles um, that you refer to on a regular basis. Yes, well, mm -hmm. I kind of um, keep this in front of me because 
in the state of Pennsylvania, first of all, there's a, a real push for additional funding for um, pre-K. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if a lot of people know this, but from birth to the age of five, there is the largest amount of growth in the brain that, that there will ever mm. be. And so if children are missing out on quality education, whether at home with a, with a parent who's providing it or in a childcare or daycare setting, um, they're, they're starting off behind. Okay. And so okay. there's a push in Philadelphia as well as the entire state to um, provide additional funding for pre-K. Mm -hmm. And um, in some communities, parents are able to afford it, but in other communities where you have working parents or parents who are very low income, it's not possible. Mm -hmm. And you know, this little card just kind of talks about some of the statistics. Um, and I'll take one for example. Forty years of research shows that children receiving high quality early education are more likely to do better in school, but also more likely to graduate from high school, mm. attend college or job training, and have higher earnings. So the investment that we make in young children and in families on the front end mm -hmm. saves so much money and heartache on the back end. And so, produces yes. really significant results. Absolutely. 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 Well, Pam, as you think about the future, you have clearly focused your energy for action. And as you think about the future, where do you see this particular business, since you have multiple businesses, going? Um, I see it filling a niche. There are a lot of different companies out here, and there are even government agencies that do some of the same things that I'm doing. But I see it filling a particular niche. The interesting thing is that with myself and others who are part of my company, um, all of us are diverse enough to fill that niche both, you know, in an inner city um, environment as mm -hmm. well as out in the suburbs. So one of the things that I'm doing right now is just reaching out to, a, I, I know so many directors, I've been in education mm -hmm. for 33 years, so I'm reaching out to some of the people that I know and just letting them know what I have available. Um, I've done some wonderful trainings. I actually enjoy, I get a kick out of it. Like, mm -hmm. Putting the trainings together mm -hmm. and then, you know, trying to determine what the needs are for the staff. Mm -hmm. And I've had people to come up to me and say, you know, I've been going to trainings maybe for 10 or 15 years. This is one of the best because it's very interactive. Mm -hmm. I do that in my classes as well, making sure that they're not sitting just getting information, but they're interacting and they're learning how to apply what they've learned when they get back in the classroom. So I see growth. I, I just don't know how fast okay. or how big, but I, okay. I believe we're gonna fill a very specific niche. Well, I look forward to hearing how your company grows, and it's very exciting that you're part of an entrepreneurial family yes. with a legacy and creating a new legacy for the future. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being on the show. I feel fantastic, and I feel oh. honored, honored that you invited me. Thank you so much. Sure. <laughs> Thank you, Pam. Okay. And, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you, where can people find out about you? Should they look for you on the web? Yes. Should they check you we out We have a um, website. The mm -hmm. company is still new, so we're mm -hmm. still building. In Great. fact, my son is a web designer, so he's building the website. Oh, terrific. And so Keeping it's, it in the family. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's www.legacymakers.com. Dot co, not dot com. Okay. I'll say it again, www.legacymakers.co. Terrific. Thank you. Well, Pam, thank you again for being on the show. And I want to say to our listening audience again, Significant TV brings you significant stories from significant entrepreneurs. Join us next time as we continue our discussions and conversations. Thank you.